What's up, everyone? This is Carrick with ACG, and it's my continuing open world adventure to bring you game reviews that aren't just a few minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today's open world extravaganza is Mafia 3 from Hangar 13 and published by Take Two, and it's out now for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. In Mafia 3, you take on the role of Lincoln Clay, which roughly translates to President Dirt, as you try to rise to prominence in the black mob in the fictional city of New Bordeaux. A Vietnam vet fresh from the war, all you wanted was to slice off a little bit of that completely illegal and terrible illicit trade of the town, but as is normal in this walk of life, you're double-crossed and left for dead. Which is good, because if it had all worked out fine, the game wouldn't be called Mafia 3, it'd probably be called, like, Hi, my name's Don King, the documentary. But instead, the bad guys make the bad guy mistake of thinking you're dead, and that leaves you with the ability to return with a vengeance, like a Hendrix Blair in 6'4", shotgun-toting angel of death. So let's see if Mafia 3 builds on its successors, but also how it handles the strengths and weaknesses, pitfalls, and practicalities of current open world titles like GTA, Saints Row, Watch Dogs, and others. Let's do this. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Mafia 3, the world's worst best friends, dynamite for dummies, and celebrating mankind's love for fire. Graphics are up first. Yeah, so like a weed sale gone wrong, this is actually just one hell of a mixed bag. First, at all times, the game is really trying to throw various post-processing effects, environmental themes, and colored lighting at you, and lodges you in this new Bordeaux and a feeling of almost fantasy-like fiction. Everything from the sunset to the sunrise, the world is always a slight unique hue, and that, to its credit, gives a bit of a different feel than other open-world games. Also, the world design is spectacular, with the cluttered of lived-in locations that might be second only to GTA V's rough and tumble locations that were basically societal warning signs screaming do not enter. The world itself isn't huge, but what is there is handled to perfection with homes and businesses sometimes built almost on top of one another as a remnant of prosperity and good times winning out over excellent town design. The world is filled with places you can actually enter as well, and while not every building can be entered, enough can that it lends to this feeling of surprise as you play. Now animations for the most part are excellent as you shoot, slam, stab, slice, punch, pin, gut, and gore your enemies throughout the game's level. From Lincoln's WWE favored sleeper holds he absolutely loves to put people into, to the heavy recoil and shake of larger firearms. Even the vehicles of which you can choose a normal or simulated driving experience are actually done really well. Not perfectly, but with an eye towards a cohesive feel regardless of the action that you're taking in the game world. Everything has a particular gravity to it, and it's always the same. Now there are some missteps of course, because what's open world without jank, but this game might have too much. Because now that I've spent time with all of the game versions, I can just say this, it was not ready for release graphically. First, the Xbox One crashed six times straight to the OS dashboard with the PS4 crashing another three times, the PC four times, which begs the question, what drugs were the CERT team doing when this game was coming up on consoles? Also, on the console versions, they battle the 30 frame rate like a goddamn trilogy of UFC fights, getting to it, dropping out, then getting back to it only to drop out again. While the FPS never seems to go sub 20, it's not embarrassed to flirt with the low 20s from time to time. Also, the consoles have issues with draw distance pop in, lightning errors, shadow errors, clipping, and absolutely terrible vehicle damage models. While the PC has less of these issues, obviously, because it's more powerful, it's also locked at 30 FPS. Hey, I got an idea. Let's go get that Ferrari you've always wanted and then put a goddamn giant block of wood under the gas pedal. Developers have said they already have a patch in-house that allows for 30, 60, and unlimited frame rates, which I have to say, who gives a shit? You handled your resources poorly. If you're just now realizing, PC gamers would have wanted that day one. The saying you only get one chance to make a first impression is still true, and unfortunately, here it's not doing so well. Luckily, it does seem to be okay on the FPS side on the PC because, well, it can't get past 30. I wouldn't call it well-optimized. It's certainly working a bit better, though, than some of the less PC-catered titles we've seen as of late. Really, while texture work is hit and miss, the variety in the city, the soft lighting effects, and the absolutely stunning facial motion systems were definitely pluses that I noticed regardless of what was going on. Here's the thing, though. Despite all this, the way the game is presented, even when shit is going astray, it can actually look gorgeous. I wouldn't say it is gorgeous. There is a difference between those two sayings. It has the ability to be so. It's just that it's so riddled with little issues that most of the time it's trying to get its makeup on. As a package, I would say average at its very best on the PC, with the Xbox One being the worst, and it sure does look like it's probably at 900p, and the PS4 right in the middle, but unfortunately those consoles should not be crashing like that. Very, very disappointing. Sound, music, and voice. It's considering a deal with the Russians to scale back our nuclear program. We have that and a lot more right here on Native Sound. What about the own war, I say? But then I realize, Lincoln 
needed to go out and make his mark. And that's precisely what he did. I'm so... so proud of you. And of course, as always, sound is up first. Now, here is something I can get behind in Mafia, whether it's the chop of dirty sewer water under your drug boat and that hollow thump, thump, thump every boat owner recognizes when the hull hits a spot between crest and wave trough, or the wicked low end of a shotgun blast as you explore the hidden science of brains. The sound is actually phenomenal, but it's the environmental sounds that blew me away regardless of platform. You know, as I've said before, to truly make a game world feel like it's living and breathing, the layers of environmental sound have to be present and accurate. And there's an almost insane amount of environmental audio from the quiet echo of dogs barking that carries perfectly across the nighttime locations or the huff and quiet shuffle of shoes as three men play dice on the street. It is wonderful. Some of the best open world environmental audio I've heard in a long time. Which of course makes the fact that the cars sound like those damn cans you flipped over when you were a kid that made a mooing sound all the worse. They are terrible. Run through some kind of comic book filter. They are super tinny and missing a ton of frequencies. I mean, think back. This was a time when car manufacturers were exploring the dark mysteries of huge horsepower to make up for massive inefficiencies. Where problems with speed were fixed with the burn barrel planning style, which is, hey, a bit of gas causes a nice big fire, so a ton will really get this shit going. Here, it sounds like your cars are literally running on borrowed time, always threatening to choke themselves into just quitting from embarrassment. It's not that they don't sound like they should, it's that they do, the sample is there, but it seems like it's run through a filter to remove about 90% of their dynamic range from the sample, resulting in a car that sounds completely and utterly like an imitation of a car. It is crazy bad. Luckily, everything else in the game is actually done really, really well. Music. Now, as you guys know, Jesse Harlan, who I had on the channel, and Jim Bonnet composed this, and the mix of classical 60s music right from the radio stations of the time and the original blues and ambient hits that these guys did is a very, very unique style. It's not going to be for everyone, and the soundtrack is easily the most eclectic and unique of any open world game I can remember. The fact is, the imperfection and freeform that makes up that great type of genre offsets the more structured classical music you get in the licensed tracks, and it's just this really wonderful dance between the two. Now, it's an acquired taste, but for me, taste acquired. Voice. It's just excellent, and I dare say I like the voice work here better than any other open world title, including all of the GTAs. It's not that they rushed out and grabbed Hollywood actors, because aside from the amazingly good Erica Tazel from Justified as the possibly downright insane Cassandra, many of these folks you won't even recognize. No, instead what Hangar 13 did here was sort of offer some of the most stellar voice acting direction I think I've ever witnessed in a game, with almost zero tells as to what a person may have been told to act like during any one scene. Some of those impromptu documentary style interviews you see in the game are instantly riveting with the voice actors and the characters themselves feeling like incredibly real people that someone walked up to and said, hey man, can I have a minute of your time? I mean, sincerely, this is how you do voice work. There are no standouts that would be instantly recognizable. Instead, there's an excellence in execution here that goes towards creating a unified vision of a fiction come to life and man do they do a good job gameplay so the game really starts out quickly in a series of flashbacks to get you accustomed to your various abilities like what I like to call Vietnam vision, which allows you to track enemies sight unseen simply because Lincoln is a badass like that, as well as switching out weapons, movement, and cover. And then it sort of drops you into this revolving story with flashbacks and the fiction's current timeline as you find out what went wrong on Lincoln's original score and why he is hunting the fuck out of everyone in the game. As you progress in the story, main missions are accomplished by completing the smaller side missions connected to them, with side missions affecting the main missions chances of success, such as the ability to affect the lifestyle of rival gang members so much that they end up making a mistake and coming out and you can pounce on them, showing them that the one man you don't cross is a dude who returned from Vietnam telling dead baby stories. And yeah, that actually happens in the game. The open world structure here has various required missions for your main gang heads as well, like taking out a rival or exerting influence in a part of the city. Optional missions for some side characters that will gain you reputation with them, and then completely optional stuff as well. All of what you do is revolving around you taking over the entire city's gang activities from the people who did you wrong and reaping some righteous vengeance. As you take over locations, you upgrade your gang members, and so begin to slice up and divvy out control of the city. This is where the city control aspect of the title sort of comes out, where each decision you make, like if you give the newly liberated Riverfront crime rewards to your consistently pissed off Irish gang member, that could piss off the others. 
enough so that they may leave your gang and become an enemy. One thing that I loved here was the interweaving of the missions though, like the ability to wiretap locations and by doing so, you can not only take out enemy gang members, you can now also use the information you get from those taps and blackmail them, making them work for you. It also opens up additional optional jobs. I love when the function of something is adjusted by small steps you take outside of a main mission, and you see that in the game world, and it's this moment where you're not just being told, ta-da, you now know more about your enemies. Instead, you sometimes hear the wiretaps or are informed of new situations developing. That form and function meets together there really, really well. Also, control is rock solid, even in the weak-ass sounding cars or the boats that threaten with every single wave to disintegrate around you, or even when you're running up on someone to use those harsh tearing moves that Lincoln uses in his stealth attacks. Combat here is just this awesome visceral dance of violence though, with Lincoln dangerous at both ranged and up close combat. There is this moment when the firing pin clicks, telling you you have no more bullets, and instead of worry, there's almost this sheer childlike excitement as you begin fruit sighting enemies up close. I think it's best to remember that the fiction supports Lincoln as as being a badass. He didn't spin the Vietnam War talking on a radio to GIs. He was in a special forces unit, probably the likes of which Steven Seagal would pretend he was a member of. But Lincoln's skills on the battlefield are instantly recognizable and it's something that's really played out within the storyline. It is certainly excellent combat in an open world environment with the ability to adjust things like aim assist at various levels also to keep difficulty at a manageable pace. The cover system here also works well with a camera system that works in tandem to never really obscure your vision but also not be unduly unfair to the AI. Now as you guys know I do test AI on all levels to see the learning curve for folks just getting into their first open world title all the way to peeps who played the old shitty true crime games. And it's okay, it's not great. On the harder difficulties, enemies don't necessarily do more or engage in more intelligent gameplay, but are unusually quick on the draw and certainly much better with their aim. This is fine for an open world title, but I found the AI almost uniformly easy to beat up close. While they noticed fighting occurring around them faster on higher levels of difficulty, it was never really something that I couldn't handle. One area I hated though here was the awkward way in which the pseudo jump button is used. It's more of a contextual thing, doing nothing if nothing is available. But how the fuck will you know if you can do something without trying it, which leads you to humping and rubbing up against structures trying to find that one spot where you can pull yourself up. It's a small issue, but it became noticeable, especially when action got hot and heavy. So let's talk a little bit about atmosphere, because Mafia has talked about it since day one. Each open world game has their fictional atmosphere and theme, and for better or worse, their delivery of actions within that atmosphere sort of needs to match or else the entire world feels false. GTA V and its middle-aged men in bad situations meeting up with an up-and-comer not yet burnt out on life. I mean, even Saints Row and its ever-increasing craziness culminating in alien abduction superpowers and trips to Hades. And here in Mafia 3, which is easily the darkest of all of them, from the odd way in which reporters report about your actions on the radio that always have a slight bent delivery to them so that the reports can make sure everyone knows you're a big scary black dude, to the way cops are consistently staring at you wherever you go, to the way the game delivers information about where you are by the way NPCs treat you as you walk around. Sometimes with a, hey my boy, and other times with some of the harshest language you will ever hear in a video game. And personally, I love that theme. While GTA V was more of a gangster rap version where the N-word was bandied around like a nickname shot from an assault rifle, it was an almost mind-numbing barrage of stupid. The menace and sheer hate and vile in Mafia 3, in which your character is sometimes seen, is handled incredibly well here, and with an eye towards realism for that time and not an, oh wow, look at us, we're so edgy of the present. It is, for all intents and purposes, a civil rights shit sandwich you're living through anyway. I mean, so much so that I killed someone in a bad part of town and the radio dispatcher for the police said something like, hey guys, someone got shot in the hollows if you care and want to go check it out. That was just brilliant. And you find that police response is tied into the fact that back then the level of corruption was so high it probably showed up in friggin' blood tests. Now, Lincoln's not a hero here either. In fact, he's fairly unredeemable and an asshole, but it's handled with the very real portrayal of someone wronged who's gone so far off the deep end that leaving a smoldering crater where the enemy once lived is simply part one of a 17-step plan of total annihilation. And remember, he wasn't the greatest of guys before he left for Vietnam either. It's that mature look at a person who isn't the greatest of people that occurs here and does so well. And the documentary style and flashback moments absolutely add attention while also never really adding confusion. Easily the best paced story in an open world game. Here's the rub though. The question is probably already forming in your head. If it's an open world game, does it get repetitive? It does not have the open world fantasy fun park of GTA V, that virtual drug den of unique things to do. Instead, Mafia's open world has you make tangible changes to the gameplay world until 
you don't. In many ways, it feels like a mix of Sleeping Dogs, Watch Dogs, and GTA 5 all sort of mixed together. But the long-term flexibility of continued work in the game world doesn't really exist here in any meaningful way. And the lack of a real breathing world, though there are some activities characters do, like mourning at grave sites and such, it really makes the game world feel far leaner than I think I expected. And while there are a lot of activities to do, over time you sort of realize there's a lot of repetitiveness as well. Fun factor. But what do you do in this game? Well, one second you might be brokering a deal between you and a low-life piece of shit that might have had at least partial responsibility for that giant Mars-sized crater in your head. And the next, you're doing weed runs, taking questionably built speedboats out into the crocodile-infested bayou to pick up huge bales of medicinal herb to deliver to business associates. And of course, that's all in the first 30 minutes. Sadly, the mission padding is noticeable, even early on. And for me, the title feels like it's an excellent test for gamers' ability to stick with something. It's open world, but without a great deal of variety, you would expect it's got a stunning amount of resources aimed at presenting a particular worldview, but then does very, very little with it. Now, despite all that, the one thing Mafia has going for it is the storytelling. It's a mix of excellent plot, pacing, design, and voice work. I can easily say this is one of my favorite stories in an open world game, and there is a ton of game length, easily over 30 hours. And I don't say that lightly. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. Honestly, this is actually a wait for a sale and almost a rent. The problem here is this. It has so many technical problems, and you guys know me, I hate crashes. I hate crashes and the fact that so many people are reporting them in forums all over the web. You can do a search and you can find tons of people reporting them. I myself have seen crashes on every single system I own, including the three different PC testing systems. There is something distinctly wrong with this game currently at its very core, and that bothers me. It, it, that's completely separate from the fact that I may absolutely love the story and love a great deal of the gameplay. There's a lot to like here, but technically Technically, this is easily a wait for a sale until they patch this thing up. There are a lot of problems here. So anyway, that's it for me. If you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Check out Patreon or Twitter. That's how I continue to give you guys videos. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. And I want to say a special thanks to Jacob for the retail source for the title. So as always, if you want reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullshit, stick with ACG. Peace out and enjoy your weekend.